are in YouTube land. Barb here from barbstamps.com, and it's Thursday night, so we are live on YouTube. Uh, just in case you're watching the replay, I'm live every Thursday night, unless I'm gone, or it's Christmas or something. Every Thursday night at 4 p.m. Pacific, 5 Mountain, 6 Central, and 7 Eastern. And so I look forward to seeing all of you here every Thursday night. So, oh my gosh, Barbara, you're so sweet. Barbara has just given me a tip already. Barbara, what if my projects are terrible and you don't like them? I think you'll like them. <laughs> so thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That was very sweet of you. Um, I am getting ready to get out of here. I am going to visit my daughter tomorrow. Um, she has spring break next week, and so I'm going to go down and visit her for a number of days. And so I might not be back uh, next Thursday. I might just decide to stay and visit with her. So I haven't decided exactly when I'm coming back. Um, I'm either going to come back Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Who knows when that's going to be. Uh, but I thought I'd better let you know. So in case I'm not here, you guys will know where I'm at, and I will be visiting my daughter. So um, we're going to have a good time. She has an internship this summer down in Denver, and I have a bunch of family down there. So she is um, hopefully going to be staying with one of my cousins over the summer so she can uh, do her internship and um, have a place to live. And one of my cousins lives crazily enough in Denver, about five minutes from the place that she's going to be working. So we're pretty excited about that. So we're going to head down there at some point um, probably next week, probably Monday, Tuesday, something like that, maybe Wednesday, who knows, um, and say hi to them, sort of see where her office is, uh, just kind of get the feel for the land, that kind of stuff. So it should be fun. Uh, so my husband and my son will be here all alone without me. So who is going to cook them food? I don't know. Uh, I just saw Sherry say she doesn't have any sound. Sherry, I think you might be the only one. Uh, because nobody else has mentioned that they aren't hearing me. So uh, uh, sometimes if you go out and come back in, um, then things will update. So, oh my gosh, Joanne, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Again, you guys are tipping me before you know what's going on. Maybe you're just tipping me because you're hopeful <laughs> or because you're just the sweetest people ever. And I love all of you so much. So thank you, Joanne. That was very sweet of you. And I love your uh, kitty cat. Ooh, what is that? That is, oh, <laughs> he's doing a little painting that says number one. <laughs> that's funny. So that's where I might be if I'm not here next week. Um, I had to go to the grocery store today to get my uh, boys some snack foods because they're not really into cooking. And I think I was talking about this. I did a Stamp Happy Live uh, last night, yesterday afternoon, and I was talking about how I used to, when I would leave and go, you know, go somewhere, that I would leave them food. Like I would make a lasagna or, or I would make spaghetti sauce or, you know, a taco, whatever. I would get food prepared for them so that they could just, you know, either put it in the oven or something. Well, even that's too much work for them. They can't take a lasagna from the refrigerator and put it in the oven. That's too much work. Oh, Amy. <laughs> you guys, you guys have started a trend. <laughs> Amy, thank you so much. I appreciate that tip very much. You guys are just killing me tonight. Thank you so much. Maybe you'll um, put it into my fund for going to visit my daughter. Maybe we can uh, go somewhere and have some extra fancy coffee or go to Applebee's and get some of their delicious pretzel twist things. Oh, Cynthia, you're so sweet. Oh my gosh, you guys are just killing me tonight. You're spoiling me beyond what I can even imagine. Thank you all so much. You're so sweet. Yes, money for shopping. Yay. I do need some clothes. Um, I'm going on a cruise with my daughter in May. Um, and so I'm kind of excited. Uh, we're not going somewhere nice. We're going to Norway. So it won't be warm. So I need to find, well, I got a new pair of shoes, finally. The shoes that I had been wearing were a hand-me-down pair of shoes from my daughter when she was in the eighth grade. She is in her fourth year of college now. So that tells you how old my shoes were. Um, I'm just not, I'm not a clothes or shoe shopper. I don't really like doing it. It's just boring to me. But now I have a reason to go buy a few new things. So I'm hopefully going to find... I kind of want to try, I don't know if you guys are into this, but 
I mean, it's been a trend for a long time. You know, leggings. People wear leggings, and then you wear like a long, like a long flannel top or something, you know, to cover the booty. Um, and I've never done that. I've always just worn jeans and then a t-shirt and then a hoodie. I am a serious hoodie gal. I probably have eight or nine black hoodies to choose from because I just, I love a hoodie, but I really love a black hoodie. And every time I go shopping for a hoodie, I buy black. How dumb is that? I think I have a gray hoodie that I got because Stampin' Up! had their logo merchandise. So I have a gray hoodie. But I'm pretty sure that uh, gray and black are the only colors of hoodie I have. And so I really would like to branch out and maybe go, oh, I don't know, what, navy blue? <laughs> is, that, is that far enough branched out from black and gray? <laughs> Probably not, but we'll see what happens. So anyways, I really want to maybe get on this legging train. I've never worn it before. I finally went onto the Kohl's website and I found a pair. It was pretty cheap, so I ordered it. It's in my other room and I need to try it on. I'm just, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But um, if they work, then I maybe can buy a couple of flannel tops or something like that, you know, to wear over there because it's gonna be cold. I think the high temperature, the high is like 60. And that's, I think if the sun is out, um, I believe it's possibly going to be a little rainy, so it, it's not going to be like a Caribbean cruise. So when I asked her if she wanted to go with me, she was like, it's not going to be warm. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> it's not going to be warm. It's not going to be warm at all. So, but we should still have fun. I asked my husband and my son if they wanted to go also, like make it a family trip. They both said no. And I'm like, you guys... Norway fjords mountainous tree glacier kind of thing that's right up their alley I mean I could see if I was going to a beach somewhere they'd be like no that's so boring but boils down to the fact that they did not want to fly all the way from the U.S. to England to get on the ship so they're not going so I guess again they'll be eating cereal for a week while we're gone having a fantastic time so there you go okay I'm gonna quit blabbing about really nothing that even matters. But sometimes I know I like to share some things with you guys, get your thoughts on things. So it sounds like leggings are, I should try it. So I'm going to, uh, and we'll see what happens. So I am gonna go ahead and flip the phone because I don't think I have any other funny stories. My son hasn't done, you know, anything funny. Yeah, no, he hasn't. So anyway, I'm gonna flip the phone and we will uh, do some stamping. All right, here we go. Oh, whoops, I think I almost hit the the turn off button. Oh gosh, that would have been fantastic. Okay. Marilyn says she adopt her. She will go to Norway. Okay, Marilyn. We'll see what we can do. Okay. Let me get this figured out here. Okay. The only problem I have with the Norway trip, you guys, is I had to renew my passport and I was about 30 days past just being able to renew it because there's like a time limit, your passport, it had to have been issued within 15 years. Like I would have to renew it within 15 years of the initial in issue date. I was 30 days past that. So I had to like apply again. And so I sent my application in like February 6th. They cashed my check, mind you, on February 13th. And now I just found you can go to passport status excuse me, passport status, and then that you can find out what the status of your passport is. Well, I didn't expedite it. The lady here told me I didn't need to. So they have it down in there that they have just received my application on March 3rd. And so now they're working on it. And so March 3rd is day one, and I have to wait eight to 11 weeks. So there's a chance that I might not be going on this trip. So keep your fingers crossed for me that my passport gets here quickly. Um, and if I would have known that they were going to take so long after receiving my money and taking it, I would have done something different. So anyway, I'm kind of, I'm kind of PO'd about that, but what can you do? Nothing. Cause yeah, I even tried to call them to say like, what's the status of my thing? You've had it for three weeks. You literally call there, a computer answers and says, yeah, we're really busy. Um, yada, yada, blah, blah, whatever. And we can't take your call. So call back later and they hang up. That's literally it. There's no leave a message. There's no, there's nothing. Just sorry, we can't take a call. Bye. And they hang up on you. So you have literally no recourse except just to sit here and wait and cross your fingers and your toes and your legs and everything else. So 
Oh, Jean says she's waiting on it. When did you send yours in, Jean? Just because I'm curious. I Like I said, I mailed mine in on February 6th, and they just now said they're starting working on it. So I'm curious to know uh, like where, your is, where yours is in the queue. Okay. I did want to go out and say thank you, a huge thank you to Debbie Lindauer. She sent me this beautiful card using the Petal Park. Actually, I think this is a Sentimental Park bundle. So it's so fantastic. I love it. It's one of those bridge cards. Very cool. So thank you very much, Debbie. I appreciate that very much. And then I'm just going to quickly plug my Hello Irresistible Stamp Camp that I am doing with my Global Creative Project Tutorial Group. Um, all you have to do to get into the stamp camp is to order $30 in my store. Uh, we have a private Facebook group. We're getting ready to send out our cutting guide. Okay, early January. Ugh, gosh. I, I'm, my fingers are crossed for you too, Jean, because that's just really maddening. Why that takes that long. I just cannot fathom how that takes that long, but it is what it is. So anyways... Order in my store, 30 bucks, you'll get into the group. We're sending out the cutting guide for the projects here in the next week and a half or so. And then uh, we have videos going um, up in the group, the Facebook group, at the end of the month. And then we'll send out a PDF file at the end afterwards with all the links to all the videos, all the cutting guides, pictures, all that good stuff. So all you got to do is spend 30 bucks and you can get in. All right. Online exclusives. You guys have probably been hearing about this. These are products that are only available in the online store. So my online store is Barb Stamps. No, that's not what it is. It's shoppingwithbarb.com. <laughs> I lost my head. Oh, good Lord. Shoppingwithbarb.com. And so they've added the Tropical Leaf Bundle, the Rhino Ready Bundle, and, of course, we've all been talking about the Irresistible Blooms Bundle, which, of course, is my stamp camp. So uh, those are three new bundles in the store. We also have uh, Gold and Silver Ribbon. I don't remember what this is called. Maybe it's called Growth Takes Time. It's a fun stamp set. We've got these really cool border dies. We've got the whimsical, or excuse me, radiating stitches dies. Now, I did order these and these and this ribbon, but I haven't gotten them yet. I kind of was a little bit late to the game because I was doing some other stuff. Um, and then we have some papers and all this kind of stuff. Oh, Marilyn says she has her passport. Well, Marilyn, you might be going to Norway with my daughter if I don't get a passport. So I will keep in touch. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a few other things that are in the store. So check that out. Um, I am taking signups for my Around the Bend class to go for the month of March. I'm actually going to be doing a really cool card for you guys today that is in the class. So you'll be very excited to see that. Um, the registration link is in the description of this video. So check it out if you're interested in uh, doing some fun stuff with the Around the Bend bundle. Uh, my other class for the month is the Pedal Park class, which is pretty cool. Uh, so the registration for that is also in the link, a link in the description of the video. Okay. Um, if you're interested in uh, tutorials, you can purchase tutorials in my store. Um, some of my tutorials have kits to go. Some of them don't. Kimber says she got her passport in seven weeks. Okay, Kimber, like when did you get it? Did you just like recently get it or did you get it like the end of last year? I kind of feel like I've heard that they're all of a sudden having this gigantic backlog and that's the problem. And if I would have known, I would have I would have paid the extra whatever it is, 30 or $60 to expedite it. I would have done that. But she told me not to. So I really hold her responsible. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. I still have a few of the Country Bouquet kits left. Um, they're not all Valentine's. I realize this is kind of like a heart punch, um, but they're not Valentine's cards. I mean, they could be if you wanted them to be, but they're not designed that way. Uh, the Carrots and Bunnies class, I have three kits left. Um, unfortunately, I can't get the bundle anymore because the punch is um, unavailable at the moment. But... Uh, the bunnies aren't that hard to cut out, really. So um, you could get the kit and then maybe get the bundle, um, the punch later. Okay. Stamp Happy Academy. We just, four weeks ago for her cruise. All right. Well, have a fantastic time on your cruise. Um, Stamp Happy Academy. We just gave away our three, uh, we drew three winners for the memberships. I believe we gave memberships to Terry Brummagem. Eileen Byrne and Cynthia Wodasek, I believe. So congratulations to those girls. They all got a one-month membership to Stamp Happy Academy. So we'll hope that they like it. And then as always, you guys, I always have adhesive kits for sale. If you're interested in one of these, the link is in the description of the video. And you'll be just gluing stuff left and right then. Okay. So I have two projects for you today, but I did want to show you a third that I kind of whipped up really quickly, but it's really cute. Um, this is one of our envelope, I think it's called envelope treat boxes. 
Hmm. What did I do with them? Are they right here? Yes. Okay, so they are called the envelope treat boxes, and there are 10. Uh, there's 10 boxes, and then there's a bunch of these little sticky labels that you can uh, seal it up with. But they're really cute. They go together really easily. And I thought this would just make a super cute uh, little fun kind of Easter treat. And so I just really quickly whipped this up for a blog hop that I was in today, this morning, actually. So I took the ribbon that was a freebie during celebration. I wrapped it around the box. I tied it in a knot with some linen thread at the top here. I used our the new circle punches that are, of course, not available now because everybody bought them. But the one and three quarter and two inch circle punch uh, that were back in stock, I did use those on my Flirty Flamingo and Old Olive card stock. And then I die cut this out of uh, the Rain or Shine Designer Series paper. And that's all I did to make this super cute little treat. So, I mean, literally you could whip these up in, yeah, minutes. <gasps> Oh, Kimber, thank you so much. She's starting a passport prayer chain for me, you guys. So if you're if you're into that and you wouldn't mind uh, saying a little prayer for me, I would appreciate it very much. Okay, so that's a really cute box. Um, yeah, and super easy. And you could give these to anybody. And you wouldn't have to put a bunny on there. You could just put like a little label that said thank you, you know. Or we have all kinds of punches. We've got hearts. We've got, what else is over there? Um, I'm looking and I'm not... We've got flowers, we've got a little bottle, we've got a boat, some fish, just all kinds of stuff. You could put anything on there. So anyways, there's a quick little, a quick little thing. All right, so on to my class. And of course, I don't have the dies here with me. Hold on. And I don't think this is all of them either. I think there's more than what I have here. Um, and I think there's maybe one or two more dies in here. I think there's like a um, one that goes like this. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, anyway, uh, so the bundle, this is my bundle for the month. This is the Around the Bend, and it makes really fun cards. So you would uh, need the bundle to complete the cards. Then in your kit, you'll get the complete card stock kit, which is eight cards, two each of four designs, uh, with envelopes. And then you get this little supply kit where you would get a half a pack of the brushed specialty paper and a half a pack of the glimmer paper. So pretty. You get a full package of the opal rounds, a full package of the base or the iridescent pearls, and then a couple of yards of the navy ribbon. And that's what's in your kit. Um, and then, of course, we're going to make four cards. And the one that I'm going to show with you or share with you now is one of the cards that you'll make if you get the class. So let me get the papers out here. Okay. So first off, I have already... Oh, here's a die. There's one of them that's missing out of the kit. So I wanted to show you how I kind of positioned this onto my cardstock so you could sort of see how you would do this. So this is a fresh freesia card base. It's eight and a half by five and a half. So I opened it up to run it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine and i put the die just like this okay so i it's right to the edge on both sides and then it's just a hair back from the side okay and so then after you run it through you can just take that edge off and then you have this fun little detail right here okay so we've got that then i have a piece of white and this measures oh, i forgot already I think it's five and a quarter, five and a quarter by eight. Yep, five and a quarter, and this is four. So yeah, five and a quarter by eight, and this is folded in half. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna stick this on the inside of the card, uh, something like this. And so then we're gonna have this. So you'd open the card like that, then the white's gonna be glued in there, and then you'd open it up again. So it's just kind of a little bit of a fun fold, but it doesn't use a whole lot of cardstock and it's not difficult at all. Okay. So on the front here, I did want to do a tiny bit of stamping. So I need my fresh freesia. So here's my freesia ink. And I have this little, this little leafy thing here. And I am going to bring in a foam mat since I'm using a photopolymer stamp 
Got a little foam mat here. And I'm just going to kind of stamp a few of these little leafy guys just kind of on the front here a little bit. Nothing too crazy. Did I stamp them off? I don't think I did. Okay, so I've got kind of a cheat sheet here of what I've done with everything. So I can kind of... I'm sort of winging it, sort of not. You know how that is? Do you ever do that? Where you kind of already know what you're doing, but, you know... You haven't completed it yet. So we're just going to add a few of these fun little uh, leafy pieces here. And maybe one here. And I think that might be it. We'll see when we get the whole front a little bit more decorated. If we need some more, we'll add some more. All right, so we're done with that. Then on the inside of the white, we are going to stamp this fun border. So this is actually a curved border. And I want to show you a little trick. Some of you may know this, some of you may not. Uh, when we design um, stamps to, to coordinate with um, dies, so like this stamp was designed to go with the die from the die set. Where is it? Uh, like it could go along with this die here. It could go along with this die here. And so sometimes when you're using photopolymer stamps, like if I just picked it up and I just stuck it on my block, I probably have it a little bit misshapen than the way it was designed, just because the way it's so hard to get it on there. So what I do is I have it face down on a silicone mat. I give it a couple seconds to like regain its shape. And then I go ahead and add it to my block. I just pick it up. So now it is in the same shape that it was designed to be in so that it will cut with the dies the way it is supposed to. I get some questions sometimes from people that will say, you know, I just can't get my stamps to line up with my dies. And nine times out of 10, this is the problem. They're sticking their dies on their blocks and they're misshaping them ever so slightly so that they don't, um, they don't die cut exactly the way they're supposed to. So keep that in mind. Um, if you have a large, usually it's larger stamps, like a little tiny stamp, usually you don't have enough stamp there to manipulate to get it out of whack, but a bigger stamp you do. So there we go. Okay, so I am gonna ink this up in uh, Rich Razzleberry. And so I'm just gonna kind of go along here, check it out, make sure it's inky. All right, and then we are just going to stamp it across right next to that fold line on the inside here. And I got to figure out where I want it. And I think I'm going to do it. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have that on the inside. Um, while I have this ink out, I am also going to stamp my sentiment, which is from the set, and it says hello there. So we're going to ink that up and stamp that just like that and then we're going to use the two inch circle punch to crop it out now i realize that these are sold out but a lot of you guys probably have yours i didn't need to buy this because i saved mine because i love circle punches so much so i didn't get rid of any of mine and so if they're going to bring them back that's going to make me super happy okay so then there's also these two little leafy pieces in the set and so we're just going to go ahead and add some little leafy pieces along this line that we've stamped and all right so I'll tap that in there and I'm just going to kind of go along right along the edge here and we'll just add a few there we go and then I've got this other little piece now this one kind of goes the other way you can kind of see that it it goes that way now, I did notice um, as I was playing with this that sometimes it can pick up some of the rich Razzleberry ink. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. If you see it pick up any ink, um, then just kind of rub it off because you don't really want, you know, extra rich, rich, ugh, rich Razzleberry ink um, on this. All right, so I'm going to just add a few more leafy pieces here. Maybe bring this little guy in, maybe something there, and maybe something up here. Okay, so that's the inside. So we have a little bit of interest and fun on the inside there. Um, I also need to keep the green out because I am going to stamp. There's this corner piece in here too, which is really fun. 
And so I'm going to stamp my corner piece in the corners right here and right here. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I need to be able to see the white edge. So I'm going to put this on a dark panel there. All right, so that's what we have so far. So now I can go ahead and glue this in. I think we're good to glue it in. I have a little scribble mark back here because I had a, a, a mess up. I got some adhesive on that and then I tried to get it off and it made a mess. So this is the part where I am adding it to the, the inside of the card. Okay, so we're going to bring this back in and then we are going to do this. Okay, so we're going to try to get that lined up nicely. There we go. Get that pressed into place. And that's what we have so far. How fun is that? And then we have our little sentiment piece, which is going to go right here on the front. Very fun. Now, I have taken some of uh, some scraps. I've taken some of the gorgeous uh, glimmer paper in the uh, soft succulent and the fresh freesia. And I have uh, cut out a whole bunch of things. So I've got a whole bunch of leaves that I kind of cropped out of that paper. So there's a number of leaf, dye, leaf dyes in this set. And then there's this little die that cuts out like six of these little tiny leafy pieces, okay? Then I also took that uh, flower die. There's a little flower trio die here and I have some fresh freesia. It's a little trio, so I've got fresh freesia, glimmer paper, um, rich razzleberry cardstock, and fresh freesia. But what I did with that fresh freesia, because I'm putting fresh freesia flowers on fresh freesia cardstock. So sometimes it doesn't show up, okay? But they do look like hard duty, but they definitely have a little bit of texture to them that definitely make them leaves, okay? They do look like hearts, but the texture definitely makes them leaves, but good eye. So what I did was I took my dark fresh freezer marker, stamp and blend. Uh, yes, Mary, they're in the small, the mini catalog. And I scribbled onto my fresh freesia and then I die cut the flowers out. So now they're a little darker. So they'll show up a little bit better um, against that fresh freesia. Okay. I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, everything's coming in here. All right. So I am going to add my hello there with some dimensionals and I'm going to be a little bit sneaky about this. I'm going to put a dimensional right here on this leaf because then no one's going to be able to see it. And then I'm going to take some bigger dimensionals and I'm going to add them to my circle on the other side of it. So I have a dimensional there and then I'm going to put a dimensional here and here. Peel the backings off. And then we'll get this on. So this isn't going to be centered because the way that the die is designed, it doesn't cut this directly in the middle. It's a little bit high if you can sort of see that. And see, now we can't see our dimensionals because we kind of hit it. All right. So I think I need to uh, do a little burnishing here. There we go. All right. So now I am just going to kind of group up all the flowers together and just start adding them to the card. Well, actually, I'm going to put the leaves on first. So... Let me do something here, trying to figure out where I want everything. And we're going to do that. And then I thought I'd bring that over. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and add some glue to the top of my leaves. And I'm going to tuck that under and attach it to the back. So I've glued it to the back of the circle. And now I'm gonna bring this one in and attach it to the circle. And then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna do something similar. Now this, I've got a dimensional in the way there, so I can't really tuck that under. So I'm just gonna snip off some of this so that then I can tuck it under. All right, so now we should be able to sneak that, whoops, it stuck to my finger, sneak that under. There we go. 
And then we'll bring this one in and we'll kind of put it across this as well. So this is just kind of up to you, whatever you decide you might want to, you know what, I'm actually going to cut this off. I feel like it's a little longer than I want it to be. So I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to stick it right there for the moment. And then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to add a little glue. And I'm going to do this. That to me is a little bit, that's a little better. That's a little bit more of what I wanted it to look like. Okay, so then we're just going to take these little flowers and we're just going to start kind of randomly throwing them down. And I'm kind of using one of each, one of each size in each color. So I've already used uh, the large freesia and then the medium sized rich razzleberry. So now I'm going to use the small uh, freesia glimmer. We'll just throw that right here. There we go. And then on the bottom here, we're going to do a different trio. So I've got the large glimmer and I'm going to kind of hide the end of my, what was that called? Stem. Oh, Mary, that is a great tip. Mary says when she doesn't want her dimensionals to show, she will color the edges of them. That is brilliant. Okay, so there we have that. Now these little leaves that look like hearts, I kind of wanted to throw them on as well, just kind of randomly here and there, because they are so cute. I know, we all never think we want anything, and then somebody goes and shows us ugh, something amazing. I get it. I get it. It happens to me all the time, too. All right, and again, I'm just kind of randomly... Uh, deciding that I want to add a few more leaves to the project just because we can. So how fun is that, you guys? All right, so now um, we have, we can open this up. Oh, oh, what did I do? Oh, I must have had a tiny bit of glue there. So we have the front opens up. We have some fun dimension in there. We have this on the inside. And then the last thing I wanted to do was to add some of the opal rounds. Uh, to the front here. And I think I'm going to use the soft succulent ones. Uh, so that's these little guys right here. So I'm going to bring in my take your pick tool. And I don't know, I'm just going to kind of throw some on here where I think they might look good. We'll see. And then you know me, sometimes I stick them on and then I hate what I've done with them and then I move them. So that's a possibility as well. Okay. And then maybe like right there. That, I think, is it. And then I would decorate an envelope. Probably what I would do on the envelope. Oh, look, I already did the envelope. Is this, that same thing we did on the inside of the card. I went ahead and did it on the envelope too. So there you go. That would be one of the cards that's actually in my class. Um, it's in my class to go. So if you're interested in my class to go, the link is in the description. And you can sign up. And I just dropped something on the floor and I don't want to step on it because it's the lid to my seal. So let's hope that I don't end up stepping on it. All right. Thanks, you guys, so much. Appreciate it. I'm cleaning up my stamps here because yeah, if I don't, we all know what happens. Then Barb makes a mess and it's just a big problem. And then I'm sad. Okay. So then... I have one more project for you guys. I really, really wanted to do two, but I had some things go on today that prevented me from working as much as I wanted to. <sighs> it just is what it is. Some days are better than others, right? But I had that cute little box for you, so. Oh, yes, Terry says to hit the like button. Thank you, Terry, I appreciate that. Okay, so let's get the stuff for our next card. All right, so this is going to be a fun card using the Conversation Bubbles Bundle and uh, three different colors of cardstock. So I decided to use some Sweet Sorbet, and, excuse me, and the Starry Sky and the Parakeet Party. And so what I have done is 
I have taken the conversation bubbles dies and there are a lot of different conversation bubbles. You can see all kinds of them in here. And what's really cool about these is some of these dies actually cut two pieces. So let me just kind of show you here. So I did run um, all the colors through with multiple dies. And so what ended up happening is I had already made two cards, but we're going to make one more. So these would go together. You can sort of see how they nest together. So this big die will cut out two pieces. So it cuts out this inner piece and then this little outer piece. Okay. So that is pretty cool. So what I want to do for you guys today is a technique called inlaid embossing. It's a super fun technique. Um, it's it's just, I love it. And I have I recently was reintroduced to it. And so I wanted to share it with you guys. So let me go ahead. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue all these pieces onto our layer of white. That's our first plan. So I'm going to start uh, with this piece here. And you do want to get um, glue around most of the edges on these pieces. And you can have some pieces go off the page. That's totally fine. Uh, you can just cut those off. So I am going to add all of these. And I thought about adding a bunch of them before I went live so you guys didn't have to watch me. But I kind of want you to see the process of it and how it, it's a little time consuming, but it's not difficult. Now, if you are not a whiz with um, liquid glue, and not everybody is, um, what you can do is we sell something called adhesive sheets and you could run all these things through on adhesive sheets and that might make you a happier camper um, if you're not so good with the liquid glue. Okay, and I think I'm going to bring in a silicone mat just in the event that I uh, get glue because I'm getting some glue on my hands, but it's fine. Okay. So here is kind of, this reminds me of like comic strips, you know, like back in the day, like Superman, if he was to say, pow, this is the kind of speech bubble I think that would, that would be on. So I'm going to put that there. They also have uh, in this die set are some little hearts and um, stars. So we're going to kind of fill in with those um, as we need to uh, along the way here. So let's see, we're going to go with a sweet sorbet heart right up here. And then we'll go with a parakeet party heart about like so. All right. So then you've got, I've got these bigger pieces here that are left. Cause like I said, I cut every piece out of the three different colors. So that gave me enough to make three cards. And so I already have made two, and then this is my third one. So I will show you the other ones after we're done. And it's just the colors, they just were really, they just were really speaking to me how bright they were. And, you know, I just, I really like these colors. And I have other products available in these colors to use. I've got some ribbon, I've got some little gems uh, that I could use. And so it just made it a lot of fun. All right, so what is on the menu for dinner tonight, ladies? Is anybody uh, cooking something fantastic? We are having leftovers. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to love it. And if they don't, eh, well, who cares? It's food, right? And they should be happy. I'm actually going to try to turn this just a little. There we go. Ooh, flounder and asparagus. That sounds amazing. Maybe I'll come to your house and I'll leave my family with the leftovers. Hello, Barb from Tucson. Barb, my brother lives in Tucson. He actually was caught in that uh, chemical spill that you guys had last month. He, uh, Where he works, they were evacuated and it took him, normally it would take him 10 minutes to get home. It took him five and a half hours. He said the interstate was just an absolute disaster. Um, so anyway, I just, I saw that you were from Tucson and there you go. Ooh, homemade bean soup is what Donna's having. Donna, that sounds amazing also. All right, we're getting this one on. We're just, uh, we're getting there, you guys, I promise. We're getting there. Okay. And then we have some of these little guys now that we're going to stick on. Oh, 
There's a good one. Ooh, here's a little star. What else is good that you guys are having? Ooh, that sounds delicious too, Polly. Shepherd's pie. That is one of those things that I have never made. Can you believe that? I'm probably the only person in the whole wide world that's never had shepherd's pie. It looks delicious, um, but I've just never, I've never made it. Why? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows why things happen? Eggplant parmesan. Wow, that sounds, that sounds way fancy. Is it as fancy as it sounds, Debbie? Because it sounds super fancy. Opposite side of two, but so it's quite the mess. Yeah, that's what he said. Okay, I am going to add, I think, another, uh, what am I going to do? Let's go uh, Story Sky. Heart. There we go with the heart. And then uh, lastly, I think I'm going to add a, a little star right down here at the bottom. So we've got quite a bit of fun going on on this card. And you know what? Now that I think about it, I think my white piece is too big. Did I? Oh, for heaven's sakes, it is. We're going to have to cut that down after we uh, run it through the embossing machine. I'm just trying to get the rest of the glue off my hands. It's a little bit gluey here in the uh, stamp room. Okay, I am going to go grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine, and I will be right back. Okay, that was actually supposed to be on, that's supposed to go on the inside. <laughs> ah, I should have made a note to myself. A lot of times I'll make notes to myself after I kind of design a card, I'll make a note um, and then I'll tell myself, okay, this is what you need to do because myself can't remember. Now you can see I've got a little bit of glue, some little glue spots here. So I'm just using my glue eraser to get rid of them. So this one isn't going to look as good as my other ones, and I'll show you why in a second here because of what I did. All right, so now I need to pick an embossing folder, and so we've got these basics embossing folders, and I thought that I would pull out this one. This one to me kind of looks like starfish in a sense. Obviously, it's not starfish, but it kind of looks like starfish. So we are going to stick this in here. And there is kind of a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, right way to put this in here. This isn't as random as it looks. Okay, so we're going to stick it in. And I'm going to cover it up. And we're going to run it through. And then I'm going to show you what it does. So we've added our pieces to our layer of cardstock. And now what's happened is we have embedded those pieces into the layer of white and this is what you get so you can see how cool that looks so much fun now i do need to cut this down because like i said i have the wrong piece of paper here um my right piece of paper is right here and it's quite a bit smaller than that so let me see i think this might be three and three quarters uh, no, it's actually three and five eighths. So we are going to cut some of this edge off. And we're going to go three and five eighths. Oh, I don't want to cut all that off. We'll try like that. And then we'll slide this side over to the three and five eighths. Okay. And then this must be like four and seven eighths. Oh, I need a different trimmer. This one isn't quite as long as I need it. It's just like tools in the garage, like my husband's always saying. Are you ever going to have enough stamping stuff? Uh, no, because they keep making new stuff. So how could I ever possibly have enough? Kind of like tools in the garage. Is he ever going to have enough tools in the garage? I highly doubt it. At least according to him. According to me, yeah, he probably has enough. But he'll say no. Okay, so technically what we should have is we should have these a little bit more condensed. And if I had realized that I used the wrong piece of paper to start out with, I would have condensed them and we'd have less white space. It doesn't look terrible. It's just not the vibe I was going for. So now we're going to layer that onto a piece of a sweet sorbet. So let me get some glue here. 
And because I did emboss this, I am going to use liquid glue because it's going to get into all those little cracks and crevices and everything. And we should have just a tiny border here. Oh my gosh, this is still not small enough. What is going on? Barb, seriously. Does anybody know what's going on? What am I doing? Three and three quarters. Yeah, so this should be three and five eighths. So did I cut it wrong? No, it's three and five eighths. So what is the problem? Oh my goodness, that's five. So this should fit. There's literally no reason why this should not fit. Okay, it's just that it was a tinier border than I thought it was going to be. It does fit. <laughs> you guys. So kind of gently rub that on there because you don't want to smash all of your embossing. So while well, I have that like that, now I'm going to bring in three pieces of ribbon. We have ribbons that are in all these colors. So I'm going to start by running one of them right across the, from side to side about, this is about what, an inch and a quarter from the bottom maybe. And of course, I'm going to tape it because that's how I roll. And we're going to put this one across. And now the next two I'm going to kind of do on the diagonal. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of start it over here. Have it be, I don't know, that's about an eighth of an inch away from the original. And then it's going to cross over our first ribbon and then it's going to go to the back above it at about the same distance. So you have about an eighth of an inch again. So now we're going to bring our last piece in, which is the peak or parakeet party. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to go on the other side of the starry sky about an eighth of an inch away, tape it down, cross it to the bottom. And then about an eighth of an inch or so and tape it down. Okay, so we have a lot of tape going on here, but doesn't that look cool? Yay, okay. So then in the stamp set, um, I need a scrap of white. Where is a scrap of white? Here is a scrap of white. So in the stamp set, uh, did I already pull my stamps out? Or did I put them? No, I got the stamp out here somewhere. Um. Did anybody see me pull it out and then like put it back in when nobody was looking? Oh, for crying out loud. Come on, Barb. Why does this always happen? Why is it every time I'm live, everything is a disaster? I just screw up everything. I tell you what, it's terrible. Well, while I'm looking around trying to find my stamp that I have obviously lost. Hmm. I mean, I have what I need. I've already stamped it and die cut it. So maybe I'll just pull it out and show you because I don't know what else to do. Okay, so the stamp. Now I just lost my stamp set. Oh my goodness. Here we go. So sorry. This little thank you stamp. Okay. So, oh, I just remembered where it is. It's on my stamparatus. <laughs> Because we're going to use the Stamparatus, and so I put the stamp on it. But now, what did I do with that? Oh, here it is. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Somebody needs to get a grip, and her name is Barb. Okay. So, I have the stamp on here. And we're going to use Stampin' Right markers to ink this up. So, I'm going to do the Sweet Sorbet on the inside. So I'm just stamping the thank you or inking up the thank you sentiment here uh, with my sweet sorbet marker. And you'll notice I'm using the edge of the marker, not the tip. Um, I don't want to ruin the tip in case I do need to do any, you know, like fine tip coloring or something with it. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get this inked up with the sweet sorbet. And then the outer part of it, I'm going to use my parakeet party. Okay, there we go. My hands, okay, I'm not sure what you're saying, Polly. Okay. Oh, she means that things disappear. Yeah, I, 
Good Lord, I literally just had all this stuff. I think my problem was I forgot that I was doing the Stamparatus. So I was like, where is my stamp? It should be out here, but it wasn't because I was not using it like that. Okay, so now I'm going to hook it back up. And I'm going to bring my white paper and I'm going to figure out where I'm going to put that. So that's a good, that's a good spot. So I'm going to use my magnets to hold my paper in place. And then we're going to stamp it. And now the beauty of the Stamparatus is um, if it's not super dark, which it's not, that's not nearly as dark as I would like it. I can come back in here and I can redo this. And I can do this as many times as I need to to get a nice dark impression. So... We're just going to do this real quickly. Like I said, I've already got this already done and cut out and everything. But I wanted to kind of show you my thought process here of what I was thinking and how I was going to go about it. Uh, so that in case you wanted to do it, uh, you could. And sometimes I'm able to share some tips while we're uh, going along here. Okay. I guess if I huffed on it, it might be a little bit better. Okay, how's that? See how much better that is? So then I have that coordinating die, and when I cut it out, I cut it out two times. Once to get my sentiment piece, and then once out of Starry Sky. And so, we're going to add these to the card. So I'm going to add my frame first. Let me just do a little bit of glue here. And then we're going to pop in the sentiment. And actually, we could use a dimensional um, if we want. Okay, so we're going to kind of cover up a little bit of our um, ribbon here. There we go. So we've got that on there. And then I think I'll, I'll try this. We'll try with a, a few mini dimensionals. And we'll see how it works doing it like this. I think I did this on my other cards, but we'll try it on this one. Okay, so then we can just kind of plop that in where it's supposed to go, just like that. And then that's going to go on to a layer of Starry Sky that is four by five and a quarter. So we'll just throw some glue back here. And I could have used dimensionals. You can do whatever you want. Is this my layer? Yes. All right, so... We're doing this, and I hope you guys are liking my color combination here. I'm thinking it's pretty fun. Uh, now, I did find a little piece of designer series paper out of the teacup package. Uh, so this is a little piece of sweet sorbet that we're going to put on the inside of the card. And our card base in this particular case is the parakeet party. So we'll add this, and like I said, I cut these pieces out of all the colors, so now I can make three cards, and I did. Oops, let me snip that off. Oh, I see that Mary's been sick. I am sorry, Mary. Being sick is never any fun. In fact, it's literally the worst. All right. Okay. Finally, we are going to, here's our other two cards. Check it out, you guys. How fun is that? Now, I haven't finished this one. I'm going to take the sentiment that I just stamped and stick it on this one. But we also have these fun matte dots in these same colors that we can now stick on to our card. So let's go ahead and use a little tiny, uh, whatever color that is, parakeet party. And then we'll put a starry sky. And then we can bring in a sweet sorbet. Check it out, you guys. How much fun is that? Bright, fun, cheery. And then here's the different texture. So I used the metal plate embossing folder on this one. So I hope you can sort of see it's kind of a diamond pattern. So that's pretty cool. And then, of course, the one we did today using what I call this starfish folder. And then this other one that I did using the scritchy scratchy folder uh, that's in that same group of three. Um, so there you go. So there's our cards today, you guys. Uh, the fun inlaid embossing technique and then the card for my class to go. 
Um, okay, yeah, it is a lot of work. Now, what you can do, this is clearly way too much work. You could simply, if you wanted to, Joan, just put circles. You know what I mean? Just glue some circles on. Glue some hearts. You wouldn't have to go into all this detail. It looks amazing, but it is kind of time consuming. So this is a card if you're feeling like putzing around, definitely do this. If you want to do this technique, but you don't want to putz around, then don't do like the detail pieces. You know what I mean? Just get some solid pieces glue them on there and run it through and it'll look amazing. Trust me. All right, guys, that's it. Like I said, I may or may not be here next week. It depends on when I come home. I'm either going to come home Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, um, depending on what me and my daughter are doing. So we're going to have a great time. I'm excited to see her tomorrow. And thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate it very much. Um, Thank you for your orders. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for everything. And all of you girls that tipped me in the beginning, you are all so sweet. We had Barbara, Cynthia, Amy, and there was one more. Oh, gosh, this is terrible. Cynthia, Amy, Barbara, Joanne. That's what it was, the four of you. Thank you guys so much. All right, everybody have a fantastic week. And maybe I'll see you next week, if not the week after. All right, guys, bye-bye.